Okay, this is a uh, lesson on chapter 1.5b, which is subtracting real numbers. But before we get to that, I do want to go over this, um, the back side of your notes. There's some things that we want to make sure we look at before we get to uh, the notes, just to make sure we at least discuss them. Uh, again, everything I'm teaching you is something for a test or some information that you might have missed or that we couldn't really go over. So I just want to make sure we at least talk about it. Uh, on the back of your sheet, you should see a few questions that, again, we're just going to walk through. It says... Uh, Joseph's cousin is 13 years younger than him. Write an expression for his cousin's age. Notice expression says expression, not equation, which means there's no equal sign. And so what we need to do is make sure that we understand what we're going to do. When you see this on your homework, it's going to ask you to use x as your variable. And so we know we're going to have x. But the phrasing is what we're looking at. And the phrase is younger than. And if you remember, younger than was in the same place. Uh, if, if you're younger than somebody, you're going to be taking your age away. And so we know that's going to be subtraction. We also talked about the fact that whenever you do it that way, that um, it goes in the back. So it would actually be x minus 13. So again, younger than is like less than, or sorry, yeah, less than, just like older than would be like more than. So just keep that in mind whenever you see it. Also, there'll be some problems coming up pretty soon where they'll ask you to simplify the fraction. We, of course, know this means 15 divided by 5, which is 3. We know this is the same as 8 divided by 8, which is 1. But we're going to run into a problem when we see something like this with variables. So what is k over k? Well, what you actually learn in our math over the algebra that you do is that whenever you've got the same thing on top and bottom, they cancel. And so it leaves you with a 1 on top anyway. And so anytime you take something divided by itself, or you have the same thing on top and bottom, they cancel out, leaving just a regular one. So putting that together was what's going on over here. We have numbers and variables. First thing you want to do is look at the variables. 27 over 9 is 3. But if you're looking at your variables, notice that there is a U on top and a U on the bottom, which means that both of these things go away. And the only thing I have left is a T up top. Again, 27 divided by 9 is a top 3. There is also a T up top and that allows you to kind of go there. All right. Moving into the ones on number three, which is your absolute value work. We, of course, know that the absolute value of nine is nine, but here's what you have to keep in mind. The absolute value kills a negative on the inside, not the outside. So whenever you have this, the absolute value of six is six, but this negative comes down with it. So the answer to this would be negative with whatever the absolute value of, just like it is here. Ignore the negative. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8, but this negative comes down with it, making your answer negative 8. In terms of number 4, two different verbal expressions for this. Make sure you Just make sure you understand um, the wording of these things, that you can use times, that you can use product. And as long as you make one phrase that says time and the other one says product, you should be okay. For example, 5 times a number minus 3. Or you could say the product of 5 and a number minus 3. Um, that honestly would do it. But again, as long as you make those expressions with two different words, it doesn't matter if all of it or parts of it repeat. But just make sure you understand um, what's going on. You could also use instead of minus, you could use difference. And you could say the difference of 5 times a number and 3. You could also use because 3 is in the back less than. You could say three less than five times the number, but again, those are all things you need to be kind of uh, going through your vocabulary and getting ready for. Again, that is a test question you're going to need, so be sure you're ready for that whenever it pops up. And then the last thing is going to ask you if something is a solution. I don't know if you remember about ordered pairs, but ordered pairs are always in the order of x first, y second. And solution just means if I plug it in that it's true, which means take this thing here and use parentheses 4 parentheses x is 2 plus 13 equals 3 parentheses y would be 7 do your order of operations on one side 4 times 2 turns into 8 plus 13 the right side turns into 21 you get 21 on the left 21 on the right so your answer is yes now if I would have gotten 19 equals 21 then the answer to that question would be no but again, when they say show your work, they're looking for that part. And again, this is a test question, so you've got to make sure you actually have work on that. Otherwise, as you know on your quizzes and tests, um, I take those points and you just have to make them up later. But getting to your real notes, subtracting real numbers, it is a quick lesson, which is why I could start off with what I had. 
if you think about the adding real numbers, uh, I started with a pretty strong statement in where I said there is no more pure addition or pure subtraction in upper level math. Uh, and so you might be wondering why we have two lessons on adding and subtracting if there is no more pure addition or subtraction. And so that brings us to our essential question, which is what makes this lesson different than the one on adding real numbers? And what this is more about is what I call the trick problems that contain double negatives. Uh, double negatives, if you see them, force us to slow down and rely on our fundamentals. So we've already worked on the rules of adding, which is that we add the values if the signs are the same. We subtract the values if signs are different. And that the larger number gets the sign at the end. And as usual, those, those rules remain the same, but we have to make a small adjustment for this. Again, today what we're going to do is face the trick problems that contain double negatives. And whenever we're faced with that, the best way to deal with that is to just rewrite it, which we're going to look at right now and answer some questions. But again, the best way to do it is to rewrite it. You have to remember that this sign means opposite of, which means if it's minus a negative 3, that the opposite of a negative 3 is plus 3. All right, so again, when we do that, two negatives are going to just go switch to a plus a positive, and that's how we're going to rewrite it. But again, we'll see that on your examples after you write this and move forward in your video. So quick examples on this. If you had 13 minus negative 4, again, once you see a, a negative right beside another negative by parentheses, I would change it like that, turn it into 13 plus 4, which as we know is just 17. If you saw negative 5 minus negative 1, the first thing I would do is know that we're going to switch that to be negative 5 plus 1, which now we know the five or the they're competing, so the difference is 4. The 5 is bigger, which makes it negative, and that was what we would end up with. Even with fractions, it works. First thing I would do again, though, if I see the double negative, is rewrite it. So negative 5 over 6 plus 1 fourth keep in mind we need a common denominator and the way you do that easiest way to do that is just count by the bigger number 4 doesn't go into 6 4 does go into 12 so we're gonna rewrite both of these as uh, something with a denominator of 12 again that negative has to be there keep in mind remember what we're supposed to do here is say 6 times what makes 12 and that's 2 5 times 2 turns into 10 4 times what makes 12 that is 3 and so that becomes 3 over 12 and then now we do Remember, whenever you add, the denominator stays the same. Negative 10 plus 3. Again, they're two different signs, so we end up with 7 because we subtract, if you remember that. And then because 10 is bigger, the negative is bigger, it would be negative 7 twelfths. Or, in terms of your calculator, if you want to make sure you do that, and some of you should because for some reason you're not uh, transferring the knowledge I'm trying to give you even on the calculator over to your uh, work. T negative 5 over 6 minus parentheses negative one-fourth. Now again, you should try to type this in for yourself because if you can't type this in for yourself and get negative seven-twelfths, which is what we got, then that means that you don't even know how to use your calculator, which is bad. So you should just bring your calculator up and show it to me so I can try to talk you through it. Same thing here. Again, double negative. So we end up with negative 14.7 plus 9.81. I'm going to do this the long way just to make sure you know that we can still do that. Because these are different, we're going to subtract. And remember, it's always the bigger one first. So 14.7, I'm not moving over because I don't think I need to. 9.81, remember, you want to line up the decimals on that whenever we do it. Also, remember, you want to balance out your decimals so everything is there. You cannot do 0 minus 1, so we turn this into a 6, turn that into a 10, and you're left with 9. Cannot do 6 minus 8, so we turn that into a 3, turn that into a 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. Cannot do 3 minus 9, so we turn that into a 0, that into a 13. Getting 4.89 is my number. But again, if 14.7 was bigger, then it should be negative 4.89. And again, you should take your calculator and make sure you can do both ways negative 14.7 minus parentheses negative 9.81 and there we go with our negative 4.89 which matches our answer final thought is that nothing really changes from our last lesson just be sure to slow down again if you see minus a negative anytime you see a minus sign followed by a negative number I would just go ahead and slow down a little bit we understand that whenever we have negative 6 minus 4 
that this is a negative 6 and a negative 4 being combined, which is what we did last lesson. It's whenever you bump into negative 6 minus negative 4 that you need to be careful of because of that double negative there. Okay? So other than that, try what you can on that homework. It's got a lot of questions in there that are trying to start getting you ready for the test. Make sure you're asking for help. Make sure you're not sitting there trying to miss the same question for 10 minutes in a row. Uh, I am up at the desk for a reason, so be sure to use me. Good luck.